Good day, I'm Mark Loon. In part one of this series, we establish a consensus among our experts that the government will likely keep the total debt servicing ratio and the seller stamp duty in place while possibly easing the ABSD, which stands for Additional Buyer Stamp Duty. And in part two of this series, our experts concluded that if the government were to ease ABSD, it would do so gradually, so as not to undo all the work done by the cooling measures. Today, in part three, we ask the experts, is Singapore still a good place to invest? If you're a homeowner or an investor, you will want to know. On today's show, we discuss the Singapore property market from an investment perspective. Next, on XTV, with your host, Mark Loon. In February this year, the New York Times ran the headline, A High-End Property Collapse in Singapore. I have posted a link to the article available at srx.com.sg slash xtv. But in summary, the New York Times wrote, As Singapore pitched itself as a place for Asia's rich, Sentosa Cove attracted many wealthy Chinese, Malaysians and Indonesians. But the momentum behind that boom is slowing putting the gated community at the center of its weakness. The data certainly supports the New York Times thesis that the high-end market of Singapore has been hit hard by the cooling measures. As we reported in our e-newsletter last week, some high-end planning regions have been hit hard in Singapore. For example, the average price per square foot has declined 49.1% in the Sentosa and Southern Islands planning region. River Valley region has dropped 39.1%. In reading the New York Times article, a logical question is, will foreign buyers return to Singapore when and if the government eases ABSD? Let's ask our property experts what they think. Actually, there are signs of uh, buyers from overseas coming to Singapore already for the, uh, since uh, early this year. Okay. Uh, so I say uh, late last year. Uh, we do see a stream of uh, foreigners coming to make inquiry. Some viewings have been done, conducted. Is that because they're expecting cooling measures to come off? Yes, they're okay. expecting something that's going to change. Okay. Because our price drop was caused by our internal action. That's internal to say, internal, right. uh, because we, we purposely do something. So it's not because of ex, ex, external uh, factors. That right, so the us. fundamentals are still the same. Fundamentals still the same. Our government is still uh, doing well. And so to them is that they know that Singapore is still the right place, right place to invest. Nicholas, do you think that uh, Singapore property is still a good place to invest? Mm. Well, I, I think that it, it still is. But at the moment, the game plan is that uh, you can't make it a fast flip um, kind of uh, market. That means the, the days of flipping property is well over. And I, I don't see it returning probably for the next five years or so. Uh, but for anyone who are prepared to uh, hold the property for the medium to long term and are prepared to um, probably accept the kind of uh, market fluctuation that we can expect uh, in the next five years or so, I think it's still uh, fairly good because one of the things is that um, relative to some of our uh, neighboring countries, they, uh, it still offers a fairly good rule of law. Uh, economic fundamentals as well as political stability. Uh, it's a safe place to park your money and it's also uh, quite easy for foreign investors to take uh, the money out of Singapore. Our experts agree that Singapore is a good place to invest for foreigners because of its political, legal and monetary stability, especially when compared to neighbouring countries in Southeast Asia. Take a look at these graphics. The Global Property Rights Index ranks Singapore number 5 in the world for protection of property. In comparison, Malaysia ranks 27th, while Thailand ranks 50th, and Indonesia comes in at 59th. Vietnam places 66th position. The fact that Singapore ranks so high in terms of property rights gives buyer confidence that if they invest in homes here, the government or other entities will not confiscate their property assets. But what about return on capital? Is Singapore still a good place for capital appreciation? On the whole, I would think that it will be more of a diversification kind of a strategy rather than for capital appreciation. Because if we really look at in terms of returns, I think the London market or maybe even like places like Jakarta, Malaysia, they actually can give you higher returns because of the higher risk involved. But offhand, you also need certain safe assets or safe right. haven to diversify your portfolio. So Singapore actually fits into this niche very well. And now let's dig a little deeper into the question about whether Singapore is still a good place to invest and look at it from the local home buyer's perspective. From a domestic standpoint or a Singaporean standpoint, is Singapore still a good place to invest while the cooling measures are on 
And what about after the cooling measures are eased? Whether the cooling measures are eased or off, I think Singapore is still a great place to invest because the government has a very long-term vision of how Singapore is going to develop and they have the political will to do so. And I think if you look at many countries, Singapore has the institutional kind of setup that is very conducive for further growth. So there you have it. Our experts believe that Singapore will continue to provide overseas buyers with a stable and secure place for property investment. Meanwhile, Singaporeans can have great faith in the nation's long-term economic potential and be confident that property will continue to be a good investment. We hope you have enjoyed our three-part series. Tune in next week for a monthly HDB report where we discuss the question, Are HDB flats now affordable? For those of us at XTV, thank you for watching. I'm Mark Loon. Have a good day.